Oh my God. I'm so jet lagged. If I fall asleep in the middle of answering a question, I apologize. Hello, well, good well, afternoon. Good afternoon, welcome. Welcome back here on thank stage. You, it's great to thank see you. you. Are we all excited? <laughs> now, I must say, I know you're very jet lagged, but there was a lot of people outside before queuing up. So, so excited to see you here in Abu Dhabi. Make some noise for Abu Dhabi, come on. It's great to have you here. So, I know it's been a flying visit for you. But have you managed to see any of the UAE? Not a, not a thing. I saw the inside of a car that drove me here. I've seen this room. And I've seen that yellow table outside where I've been signing things. Uh, and that's about it. But it must have been great to see so many fans here at MEFCC. You know what I did see? I drove, because we flew into uh, Dubai, and then we drove out here, right? It's like an hour and a half drive or something. And the guy was telling me, I was like, am I gonna see some desert? Cause you know, I've never like seen the desert. And he was like, yeah, there's a little bit of desert that you drive by, but there's walls on the side of the road. You can't really see. And I was like, what, why have walls? Like sandstorms coming in or something? And he was like, no, camels, right? Camels like wandering. We have deer in New York to wander in front of and really mess up your car, but like camels. Did you see any camels? I didn't see any cameras, I didn't see the walls. Though. So you've seen the walls? I've seen the, the walls. UAE. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a real highlight, that I must say. I know. Was. I'd like to see some more real desert, but yeah. that'll be for next trip. Any, any plans to travel back through the Middle East anytime soon? You know, it's crazy. Like, I've been here, I was here in December as well. I was in Dubai for two days. Uh, a new movie called Gran Turismo that I'm in that comes out in August. We shot in a, yeah, that's going to be a fun movie, actually, really fun. But we shot uh, at a racetrack in Dubai for two days. That was very cool. And we shot at the airport in Dubai as well. So. Did you get to go, like, hey, were you driving? Were you part of the... No, no, I'm the, I'm the old man in the pit who <laughs> yells at everyone while the young people drive. Okay, yes. all right. Uh, what's your favorite thing about these type of events? Obviously, you get to see so many people here. You know, everybody really makes an effort. They're dressing up as their favorite characters. What's, what's your favorite thing about these events? I mean, I, yeah, I like the fans. I like the people. And I got to say, like, you guys are so respectful and kind as a group of people and just generous and sweet, your smiles and everything. It's not always like this. Sometimes people are weird and horrible, but none of you have been weird and horrible. It's like really like, you're like really like lovely people. So thank you. Uh, and you know, I mean, that's really what it's all about is I'm so appreciative that people love the same stuff that I love, like Stranger Things and Marvel and so appreciative that uh, you know you guys have welcomed me in. The fans have welcomed me into these communities, and like what I do, it just uh, it just means so much to me to just see the smile smiles on your faces, and it's just such a beautiful thing. It's always what I've wanted to do as a human being was touch people with acting, and uh, you know when I see this here, it just makes me feel like I've. I'm like living my dream. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I want to thank you for that. So you touched on Stranger Things. Now, just to explain to you guys as well, there will be an opportunity for you guys to ask some questions. So start thinking about those questions. I'm sure you've already got lists and you know exactly what you're going to ask him. But just in around five, ten minutes, we'll open it up to you guys. You can have your moment to ask the questions. But let's talk a little bit. You know what bit. I thought you were going to say? You were like, I just want to let you guys know there's a show called Stranger <laughs> yeah. Things. Yeah, there is. On Netflix. There is. Have you seen then it? He is it. You seen yeah. Stranger Things? So, Stranger Things. Yeah. I remember when somebody said to me, You need to watch Stranger Things. It's amazing. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if it's going to be my thing. And I watched the first couple of episodes and then I was hooked. I was fully hooked and I love it. I absolutely love it. But when you were first approached for the gig and you, you saw the script, what was your initial reaction? Did you think it would become the success it has today? No, not at all. I mean, I loved it. I, I have to say, when I got the pilot script, I thought it was just so beautiful and so cool and so special. But I, I 
didn't think that when we shot it, I really didn't think anybody would watch it, you know. So much, so many things that we do as actors, like, you know, they fall into these tiny niche categories. So I didn't really think this thing would catch on. And then the first weekend when it came out, it was, inc the response was incredible, but I, it was not what I expected. And your character, Jim Hopper, I make some noise for Jim Hopper. He's, he's like, I love him too. I love he, him he has much. really like touched so many people with his role and his character. Like, how does it feel playing such a complex character, and and how do you prepare for that kind of role? I mean, it's you know probably the my favorite role I've played on television and film uh, thus far. Uh, you know, you just like pour your heart and soul into him. I mean, he's grown so much as. I have over the last seven years, eight years, I think I've been playing him. Um, and uh, so every season we get to see new colors of him. And there are people have favorite seasons of him, you know. They like him in season one, or they like him in season three when he's got that mustache, he's crazy. Or they like him in season four when he's all like, you know, so he is so multi-layered. But I remember right from the very beginning when I first worked on the first season, I just found these really deep, uh, these deep places in myself and in him related to his daughter and to his own sort of self-hatred. Um, and I think that was, uh, I just tried to go as deep as I could with this man and try to figure out who he was. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of uh, American method acting work, which is basically like really exploring the psychodynamics of a human being and trying to get as close to them as you possibly can. And so, yeah, I just work really hard. And he's, he's an infinitely rich character. And you'll see in season five, too, he gets even more complex. You start to see other layers of him there. Um, and yeah, he's just the greatest. I work, I work really hard on him. And what, yeah, round of applause, please. Now, I'm going to ask this question, but I probably already know the answer. Well, can you tell us anything about the next series? Yeah, uh, so the first scene, what happens is... Uh, I'm not going to tell you. I mean, well, uh, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. You know you don't want to know. Because it's, it's so... It's annoying that I can't tell you that, but it's also so great, isn't it? Because I wish... I sometimes wish I couldn't read the scripts. Unfortunately, I have to read the scripts and play the role, but I'm so excited to know this secret and to have you just watch it. I mean, you guys must have felt this about season four when that thing came around. It had been years since we'd released anything. And when that thing came around, I remember people being really snarky online about like, oh, what, we don't even remember that show. And then when it came out, it's just such a wonderful show. You just churn through those things, one after the other, like, all right, one more episode, one more episode. And so this season will be no, no less like that, but I, you know, I don't want to give anything away because I want you to have that pure surprise and I'm, I can't wait for you to see it. What has been, what's been your favorite part of Stranger Things, whether it's just being in the show and being surrounded by so many amazing people, the reactions to fans, maybe your favorite scene, what's kind of been the highlight of the whole Stranger Things experience and, and life for you? I mean, it's hard to pinpoint, I guess. It's all of that, you know? Uh, it's, uh, the scripts are so good, the Duffer brothers, Matt and Ross Duffer who create the whole show and write all the episodes um, are brilliant. My fellow cast, uh, Millie Bobby Brown and right? uh, that little weirdo Finn Wolfhart, um, Gaten and Caleb and Noah, uh, Winona Ryder. And, uh, you know, I love them all, and we're like a family now, and I continue to be awed and inspired by their work. Um, it's just such a wonderful environment to work in. And then the real cherry on the top of the Sunday is the fact that it touches so many people. And I, I feel that, you know, what's great is like, 
you know, there are a lot, there are people out there that are kind of celebrities, right? Like you know this person because you've seen them on TV or you know this person because, I don't know, they're on Instagram or whatever it is. But for me, I really see that like when people come up to me and they talk to me, a lot of times it's for that show, but they've really been touched by the character of Hopper as opposed to me. Uh, and that's so beautiful to have been able to do to people, to move them with a story and a narrative like that. So that's really the cherry on top for me of the whole experience. I want to touch on as well, you mentioned your fellow cast. Obviously, you've kind of become a part of their lives from when they were super, super young. And has kind of watched them grow up. Like, you must be proud of, of them as well and what they're achieving. and you know, that, that kind of role that you've got as a, as a fellow actor, but somebody that they can look up to as well. Do you feel like a, a, a little bit protective over them? Or, yeah? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am, awe, I am in awe of what they've accomplished and what they've done, especially at how difficult it is. I mean, you know, they started this when they were 11 years old. And I think of someone like Millie, like, you know, she started that part when she was 11 years old and that first series came out and she was so brilliant in it and the world fell in love with her to such a great degree and then all this attention is showered on you and it really does a number on you. Like even me, it happened to me when I was 40 and even then it's like it does a number on your mind but to be so young and for them to have weathered it so well and to have created all this rich, new, interesting work uh, and the fact that they're just you know, out there making good movies and stuff. I'm just so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. Okay. I'm sure there's going to be so many more questions about Stranger Things, but I want to leave some of them for you guys. Okay, so we'll come to you in a few minutes. First, I want to talk about Marvel and the Marvel Universe. So, Black Widow. How did that come about? And what's it like now being part of this Marvel universe and world that, you know, you come to events like this and you see how seriously people take it? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it was kind of random. I just got a weird phone call. They wanted to meet me at a restaurant about some project. And it was uh, Kate, the director, sat me down and described the whole script to me. She said she couldn't give me a script, but she described the character and you know, it was with Scarlett and Florence, and at that point, Rachel Weisz had signed on to play Melina. And it's kind of like a dream come true. You hear that cast, and you're like, whoa, okay. Uh, so, yeah, it just went about very quickly. I think I came on board, and then two months later, we were shooting. Um, and, you know, it started to unfold in a mysterious ways, because you do get involved in this family. like. Most of the time you just do a movie and that's the thing. But this, it's like you're involved in a whole universe, right? So there I was, I had done this thing. I didn't know where he would go. And now Thunderbolts got written, which is like a really exciting movie. Uh, that Florence Pugh gets to be involved again. Is like, she's really quite something, a force of nature. And, you know, Sebastian Stan and Wyatt Russ. I mean, all these like incredible actors. And it's really a, I, I do know the story of that, and it's really trippy, it's really fun, and it sets up a whole new thing uh, moving forward with the MCU. So to be a part of this whole universe, this whole world, and now we've seen, uh, if you've seen Ant-Man, you've seen like Kang, uh, Loki as well, like Kang has been introduced as this major figure, and. You know, there's a whole story that they, Kevin Feige and these guys have in their head that is, you know, 20 years from now, what's unfolding and what's happening. And so to be a part of that uh, is so exciting to know that you're telling this like big, big landscape is really exciting. And Thunderbolts is 2024, right? We're shooting it this year and it comes out, yeah, next year, I think July. Okay, July next awesome. year, August All next right. year. So, uh, and obviously, being part of shows like Stranger Things and now you're in the Marvel Universe, uh, how does it feel like seeing you in this kind of form? <laughs> you know what, to be honest, it, it, I don't feel it at all. Like, I used to, like, for about three months. When you first months, saw it, were you like... Yes, for about three months. And now, like, I, like you, love the character of Hopper, and it's almost like I don't even see myself anymore. Like, 
I just see Hopper, and I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, that character's great. So like, whenever I see dolls of you myself, you detach yourself like, from yeah, it. Yeah, it's just well. like it's just like a character that exists in the world, and yeah. and honestly, like he's as much yours as he is mine. Like you know, he but this, belongs to you as, this, a, as a this, character. This one isn't because this was super rare. And, and I had to find it out there, <laughs> right? So this is mine. That one okay. belongs to him. This one belongs no to me. No one's allowed to take right? that. Um, and <laughs> I was wondering if I can be a geek and get you to sign it. However, uh... however, hold on, hold on, hold on. This one, this one might be for you. And what I thought we could do was have you sign it. And then one of the best questions, we give away the hey, sign figure. Hey, I like How that. About that. That's yeah? a good idea. Okay. So, I come prepared. There's a pen. Amazing. All so right. you can sign this yeah. for one of our amazing audience. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room and, and you can have your moment to answer some questions. So have we got people with microphones? Amazing. So I'm going to pick two people first of all, and we'll kind of do it in twos, OK? Just for speed so we can get through as many as we can. So first of all, I'm going to come to you on the front with the, with the ears. And then uh, we'll also go on the front row. Have you, have you broken your arm or is it costume? It's costume. Okay, great. All right. So again, on the front row, and we'll, we'll start with you, if you want to start with your question. Thank you so much. Uh, so the question is, other than your beard, what is something that you had to change in you in order to become Jim Harper? Oh, it's a good question. Now, you might be receiving this doll, but I have to wait and see what other people do. Uh, what is something I have to change? Um, um, I mean, he's... Uh, I'm more self-aware than he is. I'm more, I kind of know what I'm feeling a lot more and I, I don't act out as much as he does. So there's a bullishness to him in good and bad ways. Like he, he'll jump in front of a bullet for someone in a way that, you know, he'll, he'll fight that Russian guy in front of that machine and know that he's gonna die. Like I don't do that. Uh, so. So there's a certain bullishness and a certain like non, non frontal cortex that I have to get rid of and I have to, he just is, he's reactive, you know, he just like lives in a way that I don't. So that's the thing I change. All right, great question. We're going to come to you with the broken arms and then can we get the second mic to the girls at the front here as well? Don't worry, we'll get to you all. We'll get to you all. All right, so uh, what was your emotional connection to the cast of uh, Stranger Things? Um, I love them, you know? I think they're great. They're, uh, they're very sweet, very hardworking, all of us. We work really long hours, and we're like a family. And I mean, that's good and bad, you know? We're a family where we get along, we love each other, but I think like anybody who has a family knows you're, no one can annoy you like your family can annoy you. And uh, we have that as well, you know? We get in little fights and spats and all that stuff, and. Uh, it's just great. There's just a deep, deep connection between all of us because we've been at it for so long and we love each other deeply. All right, thank you for your question. We're going to come to the girls in just a second. And next, Mike, uh, there's a guy with a jacket on and his hand up. Uh, so the microphone to him next. And girls here, do you want to give us your question? Um, yeah, if, if Hopper wasn't your first choice to play, would you want to be any other characters in Stranger Things, or is Hopper your first choice? Does it have to be like a 40-year-old guy part, or can it be like a 12-year-old boy? It can be, it can be the demigorgon. It can be it can anybody. Be, it can be anybody? Okay. Um, I want to play Karen Wheeler. Because <laughs> I want to have an affair with Billy. <laughs> I just want to like get in a bubble bath and read romance novels. That's actually all what I really want to do. Very good, very wow, good. Wow, that got applause. You guys are weirdos. <laughs> All right, so uh, we will come to next uh, lightsaber guy, because it's really obvious. Uh, and we've got the guy here with the jacket. If you want to ask your question, perfect. Hi, I'm Ali. Um, first of all, this is a pleasure and an honor to be standing in front of you. And you've inspired millions and millions of people through the characters that you played. I want to know, who inspired David Harper? Who started that spark in him to be David Harper today? Uh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I'm inspired by so many people. Uh, I mean, it's hard to, 
it's hard to say. I tend to fall in love with tons of different actors. I guess when I was young and I was in New York, um, there were a couple things that I saw. First was Kenneth Branagh came out with a movie when I was in eighth grade, I was 13 years old, called Henry V. Uh, it's a Shakespeare play and I, that inspired me so much. Um, and then I started going to Shakespeare in the Park in New York City and I saw Chris Walken and Raul Julia do Othello and that was another uh, experience that just blew my mind. So there was a lot of plays in New York that I saw when I was a kid. And I was really a theater actor up until like my early 30s. I've done like tons of plays in New York. So it was really a lot of theater actors that I, I really loved. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, so lightsaber guy is next and then we're gonna come to this side. Uh, yeah, you stood up jumping around. We'll come to you next. Hi, uh, first of all, I just want to say I forced my parents to binge watch Stranger Things. My mom said say hi. Uh, and I want hi, to mom. Ask, you've, you know, now that you're in the MCU, you're playing a character, Red Guardian. He's existed since the 60s in the comics. So have you gone through any comic book history and com read Thunderbolt comic books or seen, you know, what the future is? Yeah, I mean, you know, the MCU has a way of turning things on its head a little bit when it comes to the comic material. And I like that. The interesting thing about Red Guardian is he's kind of obscure in the comics. Uh, and also at one point, Red Guardian was a woman. Um, Alexei Shostakov was the husband of uh, Natasha at one point. Uh, you know, he also becomes Ronin at one point. He dons the Ronin garb. Uh, he's sort of all over the place. He's also not in Thunderbolts, which is, he's not a character in Thunderbolts, at least in many that I've read. Uh, so I like what the MCU is doing with him with me. There's something very specific that you'll see uh, that they're doing with me. And you know, a lot of it's related to me and Yelena's relationship, which is uh, really great and really special. Um, but they're doing a tricky thing with him in a way that comics don't. Uh, so I'm in a unique position where I don't you know, it's not like Captain America or Iron Man or something where there's a ton of material. And what they're doing is very different. So I have a lot of freedom, and that way I consider it kind of a fun thing that I have all this freedom. All right, thank you for your question. Uh, you got the microphone? Okay, and then we're going to go over to this side and on the front row in the purple, okay? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm so excited, oh my god. Um, my question is, do you pick up habits from characters you play? That's a good question. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if I pick up habits. I learn things with each character I play. I definitely learn things from each character I play. I, had a, I was smoking cigarettes when I played Hopper the first two seasons. And then I quit after the second season and then in season three he smokes a lot. So I had to smoke those herbal cigarettes. So um, that's the only habit I've had to give up with a character. But I learn things from, from every character I play, but I wouldn't say I pick up habits, no. All right, thank Good you for question. your question. We're on the front here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like you might know the answer I want to hear, but um, out of the, the fellow Thunderbolts, who are you the most excited for the Red Guardian to interact with? Oh God. I mean, they're all great, you know? I, I mean, clearly, like, Yelena, Florence, and I, is, like, she's very special. I really yeah, like my is. relationship with her. I think there's a lot there to unfold. I'm really excited about that. But on the newer side, uh, I really dig that Wyatt Russell kid who played the, like, patriot, bad Captain America dude in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That guy is just creepy and horrible. I love him. Such a sweet guy, too, but I'm really excited to see what those two characters would uh, make of each other. Yeah. Um, can you imagine the Red Guardian and the Winter Soldier trying to talk about Captain America? How sarcastic Bucky might get when the Red Guardian tries to talk about Captain America? Uh, you might see that happen. Write your fan fiction. It better happen. All right. <laughs> All right, can you pass your microphone to the guy in the red hoodie behind you? And then we're going to come to the middle of the girl on the second row on the aisle with the phone, okay? So you first, yeah. If you had to change one thing about that Hopper, what would you change? What, 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 I have to change one thing about yeah, him? Like, uh, 
one of his like, personalities. Um, one of his personality. I mean, I think that he's going through a change in and of himself during the show, you know? Like, he, he sort of, um, he's got this trauma with Sarah, and I think it's making him kind of a real, I mean, he deeply loves and is traumatized by it, so, but it also makes him kind of a jerk, you know? Like, he's kind of too mean to Mike and Eleven, and... He kind of was out of his mind in season three. And so when he lost it all and had to sort of die and go into season four and shed all this thing, he sort of starts to realize these things about himself that he wants to change. And he wants to become kind of more aware of, of how, he, how he affects people. And I think that going into season five, we'll start to see some of those layers of skin shed. All right, thank you. Uh, I feel like we need to go to the back as well. So who's, who's got the microphone again? Where, where was it? Oh, the girl on the front there. And then we're going to go right to the back. The lady stood up waving at me like that. Yep, you're next. Don't worry. Okay, girl on the... Have you got the microphone? Um, first of all, I am a big fan of you, and I love you so much. And Thank I'm you. literally shaking. Um, <laughs> I'm so happy that I get to see you today. Oh, thank you. And I wanted to ask, how did you get into character, like in the beginning of Stranger Things? Like, how did you, um, yeah, how did you get into character? I mean, I have a very complicated process uh, about acting based on something called the American Method System of Acting, which was created by originally by Stanislavski, but then passed down to Strasbourg. But basically, what it consists of is me sitting in a room without my cell phone and without anything for hours and just relaxing my body, trying to experience what I'm feeling right now, and then trying to do some work to maybe the sense work to change it to maybe feel like what Hopper might be feeling. But it usually just consists of a lot of focus, concentration, and relaxation. And uh, a lot of staying away from distractions, like your cell phone or <laughs> things like that. And trying to really focus and just be present. All right, great question. Good question, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and we've probably got time for two, maybe three more questions. The guy with a hat waving, you're up next after the lady at the back with the microphone, okay? Hi, David. Can you see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> take your time. Take your time. <laughs> um, so my question is, um, uh, we asked the fans, we were waiting for David, uh, for Hopper and Joyce to be together for so long. Yeah. And it finally happened. Yay. <laughs> so my question is, were you frustrated as we were? Like, as I was frustrated as you were. Yeah, for all yes, like, I was. Seasons. You saw that red phone rang just at the right moment. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it, it's been an exciting ride because the Duffers and I have been talking about this from season one. There's I can't a, see you very well. Can oh, yeah, you can move. Uh, there's a, the Duffers and I have been talking about it since season one, you know, when the, they, you know, Hopper, they talk about how they were in high school, they had dated. Uh, one of the cops talks about that. And so we knew that this relationship existed for years. And it's been like six years we've been shooting this thing, talking about it. And uh, so finally in season four, we got to have a moment where we just like let it all out. And it was really wonderful. And I think, I think you'll see more of that in season five too. I think you'll start to see more of, uh, of them and their relationship. But yeah, the chopper train is real. Yes, I'm course. very excited. I'm excited to be a part of it. <laughs> I didn't oh. notice that, I, I didn't notice in the show that you, you used to date in high school. I yeah, in the show, Hopper friends. and Joyce dated for briefly in high school, yeah. Winona and I oh. would talk all about that. We had lots of theories about about Hopper and, Joy and Joyce in high school and why they broke up, why they didn't work out. All right, thank you so much for your questions. The guy with the hat, you're gonna be the last question. I'm so sorry, guys. We'd love to be able to do so many more. Uh, th be thinking about who you're gonna give the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, I've already got it. You've yeah. already got it, all right. What about this guy? Oh, well, wait a minute. Yeah, you have a on. chance to... Cha <laughs> this better be a good question. I don't know, you're all not right. quite as cute as the person <laughs> I wanna give it to, but okay, go ahead. 
Uh, Mr. Arbor, it's uh, such a pleasure to see you here. We're all delighted to see you. Uh, thank you, man. Um, my question is basically if you would indulge me in this scenario. Now, not Jim Hopper, but David Harbour is stuck in a prison with a Demogorgon. And you get to choose one melee weapon to kill that Demogorgon. What would be your choice, Mr. David, David Harbour? I mean, I know I'm not supposed to go with the Hopper answer, but it just is, it's just so intrinsic. To me, I would choose exactly what Jim Hopper chose, which is Conan the Barbarian Sword. The Atlantean Sword. And I would just decapitate that horrible beast. That is your answer. All right, guys. That is an excellent question. <laughs> But unfortunately, I'm going to give the Hopper Bob to the most adorable person answering the question. Come Congratulations. On up. Come on up. They're having a picture as well. Let me get out of the way. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. Please make some noise for the legend that is David Harbour. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of Comic-Con. And we'll see you.